let's tune it up. All right there, you little demons. Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you. Yes, you, the person who about 10 minutes before I started recording, bashed their head on the corner of a cabinet. Ow, my soft brain. Sorry, I probably shouldn't be able to feel the inside of my head, should I? Generally speaking, no. Yeah, I'll go to the doctor afterwards, I promise. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than <laughs> Captain's Radar for their suggestion of video game NPCs who just wouldn't leave you the f alone. Now, NPCs are a part of just about every video game that you've ever played, whether digital assistant characters intended to shepherd you along the story path, or as antagonist meat sacks who are destined to face your brutal wrath. And NPCs can be many, many things, but one thing they should never be is annoying. And what do you think we're about to talk about today? Oh, what a treat. So let's do it. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight aggressive NPCs who just wouldn't leave you alone. And you know the drill by now. Puppy suggestions for next week's episode down in the comments section below. And let's kick things off by talking about an NPC I wish I could boot off a cliff. Because it's number eight, the adoring fan from Oblivion. Now, those who became the grand champion in Oblivion's arena will be uh, rewarded, and I do use heavy quotation marks around that, with the presence of an NPC known only as the adoring fan. Which isn't just a clever name, because he's quite literally a fanboy who, if you entertain his nonsense for more than a moment, will follow you around and desperately try to inflate your ego with irritating flattery and offers of back rubs. Now, you chill out, mate. I've used that tactic on my girlfriend before. I, I know where that goes. You can't even call this perky, creepily smiley twerp useful in combat given that he'll just run and hide at the first sign of trouble. And the weirdest part of all of this is that even if he dies in battle, he will come back in three days time to join you again. I, I don't know if this is a blessing or a curse. The guy literally will not piss off even in death, such that many Oblivion players have simply resorted to finding the most creative and hilariously unhinged ways to get him killed. Because that's what we've been reduced to, somebody who is giving us unadulterated praise, love and affection, and we're saying, ooh, gross, get off that cliff. Feed you to a mud crab. Number seven, the Balloon Kids, Spider-Man 2. Now, to be clear here, we're not talking about the recently released Spider-Man 2, but actually the Spider-Man 2 that was released all the way back in, what, 2004, based on the Sam Raimi trilogy? It was a good game, but you know what I absolutely hated? Balloons. Are you confused? Well, you wouldn't be if you played this game, because you can do random crimes. Not actually doing random crimes, stopping random crimes, I probably should have said here, from, like, thugs trying to beat up grannies for their pension, people trying to steal cars, and of course... Return in Lost Balloons. Ooh, doesn't that sound fun? Indeed, Spidey can have his time thoroughly wasted by a litany of kids scattered throughout New York City who have let go of their balloons, causing them to soar into the sky. And if you get into the proximity of any of these children, they'll start wailing loudly. Oh no, my balloon! And it's just like, <laughs> are you hoping that you'll just be so annoying that I'll come and help you? Because you, because you're kind of right, but only because I want you to stop. But you shouldn't be doing that. That's, a, that's the wrong thing to learn at a child of your age. And to rub salt in the wound, these ingrate kids don't even offer a thank you for your efforts. They simply grab hold of the balloon and skip off with their parent. But as a direct response to how thoroughly this annoyed players though, 2005's Ultimate Spider-Man game allowed you to take control of Venom and straight up eat the kids asking for help retrieving their balloons. So yes, you go through the pain here of Spider-Man 2 for the, in 2004, only to then get over it again when you get to eat the kids. What a life we lead. Number six, Fi or Fey or Fee or whatever. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Now, once upon a time, if you asked me what the most annoying thing was about the Legend of Zelda franchise, you'd easily just point to Navi and just say <gasps> that, all of that, everything about that. But then along came Fi or Fee or Fey or whatever the f*** you want to call her, but all I know is he was frustrating to the goddamn max. Though Link's partner benefits from some pretty great character design, her incessant desire to hold the player's hand through the game's early hours is so excessive that it's liable to give you a damn twitching eye. Fifi Fo Fum is basically the helicopter parent of video game companions, listlessly rehashing information you already know and being so anxious about your controller's battery life that it borders on a genuine nervous condition. And Fifi Fo Fum also decides that the 
best time to deliver any of the new information she's just gleaned is to do so right when you're in the middle of an action that requires your ultimate concentration. It's just like just fighting the battle and then just about to land the killing blow and oh you can now tell me about how I can roll or throw bombs or, or, or pick up a chicken. How is this helping? How is this helping? And now I'm dead. And now I'm dead. Thank you. The disdain for FIFA 505 endured vocally enough that when Skyward Sword was remastered for the Switch in 2021, most of her remarks were made optional and skippable. Which is very conflicting because on the one hand, good, we do get to skip all of that needless dialogue, but also bad, we shouldn't be silencing women. This does not seem to be an option that should be, this shouldn't be a situation that should exist. Number five, Claptrap Borderlands. Okay, so this is the thing. Again, I've got a script here in front of me, but I'm just gonna just say it. Unless Jack Black is going to be the voice of Claptrap going forward, whose voice I can definitely stand for ever and a day, I never ever want to hear Claptrap ever again. The problem is, is that the voice actor who did the original Claptrap did such a good job of creating such an aggressively annoying NPC that I never want to hear it again. I never want to hear it again. Thank you, you've done such a good job, you've ruined sound. Cheers. Number four, Roman Bellic. Now here's the thing, I've got a script in front of me and I know that I should probably read it. I've already done that joke again. You know that Roman is the most annoying NPC. Him and Claptrap are on equals peakles when it comes to being an absolute pain in my ass. Because at no time was it ever the right time for him to call me up and be like, hey cousin, you want to go bowling? It's like, no, actually, I've just shot somebody in the head and their corpse is in the boot of my car. I'm being chased by the FBI. There's a helicopter over ahead with a guy with a missile launcher coming out of it. I'm pretty sure that I can see Stars. Nemesis from Resident Evil on the horizon. That's how much I'm wanted right now. So no, I don't want to go bowling. I want to go anywhere but. To be fair though, hanging out with Roman and raising your friendship with him will eventually unlock free cab rides for the rest of the game, but his constant phone calls begging you to do things, namely go bowling, quickly becomes a major irritation. And I would feel bad, right? I would feel bad if when I said no, he went away and sulked about it and was like, mm, okay, fair enough, my cousin doesn't want to hang out with me, that's pretty sad, isn't it? Because then I would actually feel bad and motivated to go and actually hang around with him. But he just keeps going. He keeps phoning you up. He is the worst. And he's trying to be nuts, which makes me feel terrible about myself. Number three, Tom Nook, Animal Crossing. Now, Animal Crossing's Tom Nook typically sells the player their home at the start of each game, but in doing so, places them on an unending capitalistic treadmill from which escape is nigh on impossible. Nook's disarming character design belies the fact that his detractors prefer to describe him as a loan shark and slumlord, keen to take advantage of his tenants at every opportunity, and at the very least, constantly have another money-making scheme to offer them. Now, a man running a business isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the ways in which he does subtly threaten the player and constantly is just like, oh, it'd be a shame if you couldn't pay your rent. It'd be a shame if I had to send the boys around to sort you out. It'd be a, you've got a lot of nice things here. It'd be a shame if they were pushed off like a cat with a vase just onto the floor, smashing everywhere. That'd be a shame, wouldn't it? And by the way, I've got a brand new money-making scheme here. Do you want to buy in for that? He's just constantly getting you hooked. He's a peddler. And you know what? Vice even did the maths and deduced how egregiously Nook is fleecing the average player throughout the game. And you know what? It is not pretty. So this guy, avoid. Number two, Sakiko, like a dragon, Ishin. Now, if you were wondering how aggressive a pint-sized, chattery, middle-aged woman could be, well, like a dragon, Ishin answers that question for you. It's a lot. One of the game's NPCs that you can stumble across is Sakiko, a world-class motormouth who likes gossiping so much that she's basically driven away anyone who would even pretend to tolerate her presence. And player character Sakamoto is next up on the chopping block if you get within earshot of her, as through a series of sub-stories, she'll regale you with mind-numbingly tedious stories with no editorial restraint whatsoever. It's kind of like the same relationship you and I have whenever I want to talk about Warhammer, which, uh, let me just see, has it been, is it, what is Warhammer time? Sorry. Oh, no. I mean, I feel like I've not spoken about it for at least three minutes. Please, no. I'll tell you what, I'll start now and you cut me off where it feels relevant. So, the Golden Throne... And that's why the Emperor is secretly a towel. It all makes sense. Finally glad to get that off my chest. 
Anyway, back on track, even if you try to bring your torture to a swift end by spamming the X button before your eyes glaze over, Sakiko has another surprise waiting for you at the end. A pop quiz on the veritable nonsense that she's just unloaded on you. Much like I'm gonna do now, actually. So let's do question number one. What did Manus do wrong? Was it A, nothing, or was it B, everything? And stop kidding yourself. It's all so stamina sappingly dull that there are even online guides dedicated to making it through these quizzes before you lose consciousness from sheer boredom. And the worst part is, it's all done by design by the developers. They wanted to make a character so aggressively annoying and then put you through this torturous hell. Uh, to be fair though, it's hard to stay mad at them. I mean, just look at the cavalcade of nonsense they give you at every other turn. And number one, the cops mafia. And finally, we talk about the dogged over eagerness that presents itself whenever you get in trouble in the original mafia game. Because this is the thing, when you break the law in video games, of course you can expect the cops to come a knock in. But for some reason, the aggressiveness is just dialed all the way up in these games. Even gingerly running a red light or going one mile an hour over the speed limit is enough to have the cops chasing you down as though you just killed one of their colleagues. Furthermore, even if you're able to lose the cops temporarily, they'll miraculously appear on your tail just totally out of nowhere. It was so miserable that it made being the bad guy just not fun at all, and that's the worst thing you could do in a Mafia game. Thankfully though, in 2020 when the Definitive Edition came out, they put a slider showing you how aggressive the cops you wanted them to be, and it was fine because I put it all the way down and had the time of my my life. Thank you. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight aggressive NPCs who wouldn't leave you alone. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And if you want to speak to me on the socials, in the meantime, you can follow me over here, and you can follow my lovely editor site over here as well. But remember, my friends, even though we spoke today about aggressive NPCs that wouldn't leave you alone, I'm going to take on that role right now and tell you again to be bloody kind to yourself, all right? You deserve love, you deserve affection, you deserve success and happiness we all do as human beings on this planet so don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise you are you are a massive ledge all right now go out there and smash it okay that's my aggressive npc thing done i'll say it every single video that i'm in i will never stop big love to you and i'll see you next week goodbye and i'm gonna roll off this way today why not eh? bye <laughs>